let's take a look at uh, GSRTD10. Just about done the objectives in this particular unit and they're definitely getting more complex. Uh, this one is about the law of sines and cosines. It says prove the law of sines and the law of cosines and then use them to solve problems. So proving, solving, using these two laws and I, I've added to understand the cases of angle side side. The law of sines is actually a very easy um, easy law or relationship to use. It's really a proportion and um, it gets more complex when you do not have a congruence environment. So angle angle side or angle side angle and so on make the law of sines quite simple. When you get to the ambiguous case of angle side side, it gets way more complex. Now, if you are teaching this, again, this is an honors item. If you are teaching this as an honors teacher, I hope that back when we did congruence that you taught angle side side as a, a congruence when side two is greater than side one uh, in the HL case and so on. So that when we get to here, we're not like reteaching all of those cases again, I hope. It makes it easier if you've taught it before you get to here. So um, the, there are a few traps and pitfalls. Of course, the ambiguous case is, is a huge trap. Um, and the idea of it, though, which is quite cool, is that you, ha <coughs> you have some angle, some side, and one of the cases, the ambiguous case, is a second side that's short enough to touch but not perpendicularly um, and it's it's not longer than side one. So for instance here would be uh, a closure of an angle side side. The reason this doesn't establish a congruence or a single answer is that this side actually could swing into this position you see how it could physically close the triangle in two different ways. One causing a triangle that might look like this, another causing a triangle that might look like this, and still be potentially uh, or definitely the same three pieces of information. Here are two triangles formed by identical information but are not congruent. And so I call this the swinging arm. And again, one of the interesting things is whatever this angle is, this is 180 minus that angle. And the reason for that is because, of course, that swinging arm forms an isosceles triangle and creates that environment. Very interesting problems.